Right, let's head back into the records room for part two of my videos covering all of the Decepticon faction. This one's got the DJD, the Monstercons, Triggercons, nine great demon generals, battle chargers, and Megatron's own gladiator core, and many, many more. You guys know where the like and subscribe buttons are, you know, if you feel like it, that is. And I'd like you to have a little think about who you think is the most powerful Decepticon faction. Because once I'm done with these videos, I'm going to do a follow-up ranking them. Anyway, let's start by pulling the files on the Predators, another aerial unit, this time led by Skyquake. They got a lot of respect and cred for their merciless crushing of a rebellion in the Skomilok territory, a strange region of space within a massive gas cloud orbiting a dying star. Anyway, the Predators established their own colony there, but because of the unique planetary environmental factors, had to make modifications to their bodies to suit. Unfortunately, Megatron ordered the Overlord take command of the Predators for a mission to take the Garrus-9 prison world. And when Skyquake refused, well, Overlord be what Overlord be, and Overlord do what Overlord do. The rest of the Predators stayed under Overlord's command for a few years. But some became sick of his sadistic ways, and eventually Snare released Impactor in the hope that he would bring in Wrecker reinforcement. And that he did. As the Wreckers managed to gain control, most of the surviving Predators fled. Anyway, this seemed to be quite a large faction with mentions of members that were never actually seen. There was this F-15 called Talon, Snare was a Grumman X-29, Skydive was a YF-23, Falcon was a Nighthawk, Stalker was a missile launcher, and their leader, Skyquake, was an F-35 type thing. The Autobots had their duo bots, so here we have the duo cons. Flywheels and Battle Trap, which were those ones that had one robot splitting into two vehicles. In the Dreamwave continuity, they were accidentally created by Shockwave when he was trying to create a triple changer. And apparently it's only when they're combined together that they're mentally whole. It's said that when they're separated, the two vehicles enjoy trapping an enemy between them and batting them around before turning into robot mode to finish them off. They planted a bomb on an asteroid so they could kill six shot as a punishment for insubordination, and they nearly stomped the life out of Daniel Witwicky. So apparently all of the creatures that Unicron reformats or creates or, you know, sweeps, Galvatron, all those guys, they're called the Unicrons, apparently. That's news to me. Like, of all the cool things they could have called them, the reformatted, the resurrected, the f Unicrons. In the UK, Marvel comic Decepticon High Command put together a subgroup called the 10 Deadliest Killers. It was a group made up of Blitzwing, Dirge, Macabre, Octane, a couple Seekers, and a couple Insecticons. Transformers Unite Warriors and Mega Empress, basically a female equivalent of Megatron who was made from his spare parts, and she had the Four Guard as her own personal bodyguard. Two of them were the twins Moonheart and Luna Club, as well as Flow Spade and Trick Diamond. Apparently they could draw on the power of the elements using their weapons that would bring forth their elemental strengths. Okay, so mini cassettes, Decepticon ones, my Cassidy. So obviously these are the guys that live in Soundwave's chest, and I would love an explanation as to how so many of them can fit in there. I mean, there's obviously some mass shifting going on because look here, there's Laser Beak has got Soundwave in his mouth. But you know what? Let's speed run these ones. We had the Auto Scout from G1, which was a drone that first got blowed up by crystal radiation, then got used to deliver Soundwave's love letter to Black Arachnia. Don't think she wanted to know. Then we got Beast Box, which was Monkey, also not the brightest. Stupid. Buzzsaw, which was basically just a yellow laser beak. Garboil, who they probably should have tried a bit harder with. This little guy called Enemy. Flipsides, who's not as famous as Frenzy. Glit, basically Ravage. Hellback, basically Ravage. Ravage Clones, literally, basically Ravage. Overkill, Ratbat, Ravage, literally Ravage. Rumble, Slugfest, Squawk Talk, Sundor, and Wing Thing. E gods! Nearly forgot laser beak. There was Uriad from the live action line, but I think that was only ever a toy. Same goes for Uriaz, who was the evil twin of Zauru, and oh, I want a tiny little Diplodocus. But again, they were just toys, so Diplodocus! These Autobots didn't perish in the crash. They're displaying the effects of a virus. The Decepticons had a biological warfare program that was mentioned in Transformers Prime, headed by Megatron to find various mutagens and diseases that could be weaponized. They developed the Cybonic Plague, which killed millions of Cybertronians. And they might have been the ones who figured out how to refine Energon into Toxan. Anyone else seeing a rabbit there? Like, look, is his mouth, is his little nose. A substance that can sap a Cybertronian strength, even paralyze them, even kill them. But strangely enough, does absolutely nothing to humans. Okay, remember in War for Cybertron when Megatron absorbed all that dark energon? Well, apparently in the Aligned novels, there was a whole group of these guys. Basically, Prime Megatron rewarded a group of bots that had followed him out of the bloody gladiator pits and used their brutal skills to help take Trypticon Station. They were called the Gladiator Corps and were rewarded 
by being the first bots, after Megzi of course, to be infused with the chaotic power of Dark Energon. Can you imagine the destruction that these guys would wreak? Apeface and Snapdragon were the Horicons from the Japanese G1 and were followers of Scorponok before later becoming some of Galvatron's most favoured combatants. They collaborated with Sixshot in a few missions before helping Scorponok in his final scheme to obliterate Earth's population with these things called Death Towers. When one particular tower was attacked by the Autobots, another bot called Weird Wolf got the three of them to perform the trio formation and yeah, it was as stupid as it looked. Wasn't there like, wasn't there four of them? The hilariously named hygiene team were a couple of cons charged with gathering Autobots after battles and taking them to prisoner camps such as Grindcore. Similarly, the Harvesters were destruction bots that would rip apart salvage materials after a battle looking for anything that they could reuse for the Decepticon army. They'd basically go through the corpses and... Ugh. Then we have the amazing looking Inferno cons who served Quintessa in the last night. On top of their striking demonic appearance, they can also combine in to form Infernocus. The known Infernocons include Glug, Skulk, Rupture, Thrash, and Gorge. Many of these were mass-produced, although the focus of the movie was on the ones that I just named. Up until the point that Optimus whipped all their heads off with one blow, that is. The Microcons were the little ball-bearing things that Ravage spewed out of his mouth in Revenge of the Fallen, which are really interesting because then they combine up to this prey mantis-shaped thing, which is apparently called Reedman. Oh, and I love how this thing is nearly invisible from certain points of view. Reedman was also seen in the IDW comics where he was blasted to shreds by this human that somehow absorbed the power of the Allspark. <laughs> They were also very similar to the Nanocons in the IDW comics, which were designed to invade an Autobot's body and destroy his insides. They got inside Ultra Magnus and Hot Rod and a couple others had to get shrunk down and get in there to fight the swarm. The last remnants of which were wiped out when Ultra Magnus chomped down on them, prompting much joking about the fact that he actually finally formed a smile. In a mirror universe, the Ultra Magnus there managed to domesticate some scraplets and injected himself with them to combat the Nanocons. I have this vague memory of Dennis Quaid being injected into somebody's ass in kind of the same way. What movie was that one? I have to look that up. The K in K class probably stood for Kamikaze and were a group of bots who were fanatical enough to volunteer to be stripped down and rebuilt into, wait for it, bombs. Yeah, Decepticon Command packed them full of a powerful explosive, threw them out of a plane, and but it wasn't all just fanatics. Some of them were forcibly recruited from prisoner colonies, as Fulcrum was, but understandably fear got the better of him and he couldn't transform into his bomb mode, which meant that he just hit the deck in robot mode. Ow. So remember in the last video we had the children of Primus? Well, their evil opposites were the minions of Unicron, a whole army of bots that have been corrupted by the dark god of chaos. Now it's a super long list, so let's do a very quick speed run. Isaclaw, Armor Height, Black Arachnia, Bone Crusher, Cryotech, Cyclonus, Devastated Dreadwind, Grinder, Highwire, Hightower, Inferno, Giaxus, another version of Giaxus, Longhaul, Mega Octane, Mega Bolt, Mega Zarak, Mobil, Striker, Obsidian, Oil Slick, Overbite, Perceptor, Piranacon, Ransack, Ransack, another version of Ransack, Refute, Reptilon, Rotor, Road Handler, Roll Bar, Ruination, Rumble, Scavenger, Smoke Jumper, Smoke Screen, Smoke Screen, Skywarp, Squeeze Blaze, Striker, Sunstorm, Shore Shock, Swerve, Swerve, Tarantulas, Tank, or Pterosaur! Urgh, monkey News! No, there's no Monkey News. I've just been watching Carl Pilkinson. However, I'm still wondering whether they should be on the list at all. After all, Decepticons, as evil as they are, are still descended from Primus. As soon as they get taken over by Unicron, they cease to be Decepticons. So yeah, Disqualified! Counterforce to the Autobot monster bots with the Monster Cons, who I can't actually find out that much about, so I've come up with my own artwork for them. Um, I don't know if I said this in the last video, but this is just me trying to sort of put forward like how I would imagine them to look like maybe. I would speculate that, you know, these guys' monstrous forms could be down to one of a couple of things. For example, like the Pretenders, they might have been stationed on alien worlds and to disguise themselves there, they had to take on all forms of the native life forms. For example, if they ended up on Dragon Planet, you know, you might end up looking a little bit like this guy. Or they could just look like like this, like Blot and Cinnatwin and those guys, they might just be natural born abominations. Like, you know, maybe they were some weird offshoot, not fully fledged beast transformers, but somewhere between regular bots and Onyx's line of more animalistic bots. The new Decepticon army was what arose after the closing of the Unicron Singularity in Transformers Cybertron. Basically, a number of Decepticons joined the Autobots after the war ended, but a few of those went off to find a new leader, only to get themselves stuck on Mars. Remember the Primus Vanguard from the last vid? What do you mean, not ringing any bells? <coughs> There you go, the multiversal group of primes that came together. No, not that one, this one. Well, there was also the new Primus Vanguard. All the colors of the rainbow. No! 
which was seven colored Megatrons, this time created by Gold Megatron with the power of the Silver Matrix. So much shiny! Including black, blue, green, purple, red, white, and yellow Megatrons. This one's not to be confused with the Megatron Core, who were six Megatron clones created by Galvatron who could fuse their fusion cannon blasts together to form one big massive boomy. These guys were defeated when Hot Rod took out Galvatron, and because he was the one controlling the clones, they lost all their power. The good old cut the head off the snake strategy! Next, the nine great demon generals from Zone. So Transformers Zone had this big bad guy called Violent Gagar. And he sent out his nine bad dudes to go out and conquer planets in his name. Bring me planets, I want planets. They were Monster General Abominus, Evil Spirit General Black Zarak, Flame General Bruticus, Engineering General Devastator, Oceanic Fish General King Poseidon, wait. Oceanic Fish General? Intelligence General Menasaur, Super God General Overlord, Beast General Predaking, Dinosaur General Cryptagon. The Photons were led by Reflector. The, the fact that they're all identical in design is pretty much all we know about them. Perhaps because they're smaller in stature, they seem to get picked on to do menial or dangerous tasks as this guy found out. Oh, please, not me, no! Have a nice journey, everyone. And Starscream bullied his ass into traversing a potentially dangerous space bridge. He made it though! Whee! Okay, another speed run. This time, police forces and government. We had the Cobalt sentries who would track down traitors and moles in Transformers Legends. There was a Decepticon Secret Service headed by Banzaitron, Decepticon High Command, Decepticon High Council, Decepticon High Justice, the Decepticon Syndicate, which was actually a criminal organization technically, and the Decepticon Miners. Oh wait, no, they were just miners. The Decepticon Miners weren't just miners. They were the group of bots that spawned and inspired the one and only Megatron before he went to the Gladiator Pits and then formed the Decepticons. Okay, we've had Stunticons, we've had Sharkticons, let's do Sky! Unkticons, who would spray out this vile toxin that would disorientate and confuse their target. There were four of these guys, including Zorillor and their leader Malador, which is funny because Mal odor. Get it? But then we had the Snaketicons. <laughs> Or one snake to go on, there was only one. His name was Vertebrake, and he was a mad scientist who was thrown in the slammer for hideous body augmentation experiments. Lim Envy? Yeah, Lim Envy. He took on a train as his alt mode. Little bit of mass shifting going on there. And set up a laboratory in the subway tunnels, where he cut off Sideswipe's head to steal his body. Steeljaw gathered a group together and imaginatively called it Steeljaw's Pack, which is made up of a group of hand-picked criminals and just nasty pieces of work, including Thunderhoof, Clampdown, as well as Air Razor, Dive Bomb, Overload, and Quillfire, and others. Steeljaw's the eventual goal is to grow this group into the new army that would eventually become the new ruling faction and turn Earth into the new Decepticon Kingdom under his rule, of course. Although I mainly think of the Sharkticons as Quintesson muscle, they have been Decepticons elsewhere in the Transformers universe. For example, helping Galvatron in a bid to take over Planet Beast in the Headmasters comic. Megatron recruited them to attack Iocon in Primacy and flooded an entire battlefield with acid to create the perfect environment for their skills. Although it didn't stop Grimlock chopping them clean in half. In 2005 R.I.D., they were suddenly quite different to what we've seen before, with them having varying and more individualistic designs, as opposed to them all looking the same. They even had pretty differentiated characters too, with Ragebite even being a scientist dedicated to building bigger and better explosive boomy devices, and Hammerstrike being a pirate. In the Wings universe, Skybite was a commander of the Sharkticons and would give the best of his troops upgrades based on their performance. Some became air sharks, which can obviously fly, land sharks that use their serrated teeth to tunnel, and sea sharks, which swim in the sea. And I know, yeah, you, th you would think that's really unusual for sharks, right? But actually, when you think about it, the standard Sharktacon is built to swim in liquid iodine or acid, and the sea shark is adapted to swim through our Earth's saltwater sea. I wondered if the Alicons were ever Decepticons, but I can't find any examples right now, so I guess they gotta wait for another vid. Decepticon Justice Division is Megatron's infamous personal equivalent of the Gestapo. Murdering their way across the galaxy in their ship, the Peaceful Tyranny, they work from an infamous kill list, made up of anyone who strayed from the path of Decepticonism. Their methods were deliberately extremely violent to spread fear and discourage any further dissent amid the ranks. As a side effect, this attracted only the most sadistic members, some of whom have adopted literal torture devices as their alt modes. Bots on their kill list would often kill themselves rather than face their brand of punishment. They were made up of Voss, the guy who took his face off and made you wear it, Kaon, the electric chair, Tesserus, who had a grinder in his abdomen, and Helex, who had a smelting furnace in his abdomen. And of course, the sadistic Tarn, who apparently is the only original member of the DJD. Now what I mean by that is that these aren't their actual names. These are code names. So Voss isn't the original Voss. 
there was a Voss before him, and we're going to come back to him in a second. But Voss's previous name was Forstock. He was a scientist and a language purist, which means that he never wanted to learn the modern common tongue, which apparently is called neo cybex So Tarn had to interpret pretty much everything he said. He turned into a high-powered sniper rifle, but his party trick was removing his face the underside of which was adorned with spikes and drills and all kinds of nightmarish, you know, torture thing stuff, and mutilating his victims by forcing them to wear it. It was revealed that Kaon's true name was Amp, a bot who would see by echolocation because he had no eyes, probably because of these massive Tesla coils on his back, not to mention the turbine in his chest. He could generate massive amounts of electricity and blast it out through his hands or in waves. So I suppose it stands to reason that he chose an electric chair as his alt mode, which apparently isn't always fatal to Cybertronians, but it is excruciatingly painful. Helex's original name was Crucible, which is one of these pots that holds like molten metal and is used for melting other stuff in. And that's appropriate because he has a smelting furnace in his chest. Helex was enormous and could squash other bots like bugs. And he seemed to have a penchant for removing bots brain modules and putting them in their mouths. And then eating them, I guess, because Nickel even found cranial fluids inside his mouth? Tesserus was probably the biggest of the DJD, with these huge tank tracks, and of course, this massive grinder in his chest. The blades on this thing were apparently covered in anuntrium, which is the same material that the Phase Sixes were made out of. And that's how he was able to grind Black Shadow's legs off. His original name was Scissorsaw, and don't you just love this cross across his face? Tarn is a weird one. As a point one percenter, he's one of the most powerful cons to ever have been forged, but he is also this real obsessive streak. Most obviously with his constant obsessing over Megatron, constantly wanting to please him and stuff, which he once stated stemmed from the fact that he felt that Megatron like liberated him and allowed him to fulfill his true potential. But also regularly putting his men through performance reviews and checks and assessments, as well as forcing them to regularly pray to Megatron. Weird. He took a double fusion cannon as an homage to his hero and he decorated his quarters with the bodies of slain bots. He also became addicted to body upgrades, as well as infusing himself with Nuke, or extra potent Nucleon, which was basically a performance enhancer. There was Nickel, she was kind of like this grumpy repair bot. And then there was the pet. So you remember how I said that Voss wasn't the first Voss? Well, before him, there was Agent 113. This guy's story was pretty interesting. He was an Autobot called Dominus Ambus, brother to Minimus Ambus, who would go on to become Ultra Magnus. You know, that's a long story for another time. But anyway, the brothers both had this alternate mode where they would turn into a Turbo Fox, something that they were both kind of ashamed of. Anyway, Dominus Ambus was the perfect candidate for one of Prowl's missions to go undercover as a member of the DJD. So he changed his alt mode and jumped on the sickening Torchfest bandwagon that being a part of the DJD must have been, and would try to get intel back to the Autobots in pretty much the most convoluted way imaginable by shooting a data chip into the right eye of the insignia of an Autobot, hoping that A, he could hit such a small target, B, it wouldn't kill the guy, and C, they or someone else would realize what the projectile was. Anyway, jumping ahead in the story, the DJD found out what he was up to and put him through a process known as domestication, basically a lobotomy. And on top of that, locking him in his alt mode by force removing his transformation cog. And of course, we're talking about the Turbo Fox alt mode that he was so ashamed of, so which was the ultimate humiliation for him. As such, this guy would take the name Voss and Ambus would have to watch their brutal torture sessions, as well as occasionally being set upon any poor bot who needed to be taught a lesson. As time went on, they referred to him just as the pet. And as time went on, he formed a real bond with Kaon. And when the pet was once put in danger, Kaon became desperate and after his hesitation allowed the Autobots to escape. So Tarn ripped Kaon's head off for blubbering about his pet and then crushed the severed head against Overlord's chest. What the fuck? And again, this is a long story for another time, but eventually the pet was killed by his former love, Rewind. And we didn't really want to get into the toys here, because that's opening up a whole other can of worms. But we did see some interesting third-party toys out there, including a DJD combiner, which looked pretty damn awesome. Apart from the slightly too happy colour scheme, I might be adding this to my collection at some point. When I got money. Which is never. All right, you guys, I'm going to have to cut that one off there. The Third and final part of this will be up tomorrow night, around about the same time. And that's going to have Pretender Monsters, the Seekers, and the Combiners, including many I didn't get to go through in this vid. Remember to get in the comments and let me know which you think are the most powerful Decepticon factions, as that's going to be one of my next videos too. A ranking of what I've seen to be the most powerful factions. All right, you guys, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you very soon for the next one. Cheerio, bye.